We have our photo frame all mapped. We know that the wood texture is going to look good. And if we wanted to, we could upload this right now, much like we did the crates, and we could put tiling textures onto the photo frame. But we can also do other things, including making our own texture to upload in Blender. And this works quite well, especially using the Cycles engine. So that's what we're going to do now, so that you'll know how to do that. There's a few steps on our way to making our own texture, and one of them is we need a texture to bake to. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Go to Image, New Image. I'm going to call this Photo Frame. We don't want it to be alpha. That means transparent. And there's no reason for a photo frame texture to be a 1024 texture. So we're going to make that a 512 texture. And tell it OK. So now we have a texture to bake to. We also need to tell the node editor which texture we want to bake to. And to do that, we go down here into the node editor and we go to add texture and image texture. Then we open up this and we tell it photo frame. All those extra little things are left over from mine. So you don't look for those. Just look for photo frame in your list. Those other ones are hard to get rid of. There we go. Now we aren't going to attach this to anything. It just needs to be there. And when we bake, it needs to be the node that is selected. See how this has gold around the edges? OK, this needs to be selected when we bake. But it's a long time before we bake yet. The render view in the 3D viewport shows us what our object looks like and how it will look when it's baked. Let's see what's going on there. It's black. That's not good. The reason why it's black is because we don't have a light source. And we definitely need to have a light source when we're using Cycles Render. So we're going to fix that now. We aren't going to need this for a while, so we'll scoot that down there. And we'll zoom out here. We're going to go to Object Mode, and then Add, a Lamp, and a Sun. This is it, down here. There it is. OK. <laughs> so here's our Sun. Right now, well, just for a second, let's let's check and see if that did any good. OK. Well, we can barely see something. Not much, not much. We'll go back to material mode. The reason why we can't see much is because the default of the sun is very dim. So we need to go over here and we need to make it much, much stronger. I'm going to put in Let's put in 500. And then let's check and see what's happening. That's better. We also need to have some surfaces for the light to bounce off of. Obviously, our photo frame would not be standing out in the middle of the air in the yard. It would have a wall and a floor. So to make things realistic, we need to make a facsimile of those inside our model. So in object mode again, we're going to add, mesh, plane. We'll zoom out. There's our plane down there. This can be our floor. I'm going to hold down the S key and make that floor bigger. OK. Now I could add another plane and make that a wall. Or I can hold down the Shift key, tap the D key. That means duplicate. And Y to go in this direction. And I've made a copy. 
And now I'm going to hit the R key for rotate, the X key for the direction, and 90 for how many degrees, and we have a wall. We'll scoot that wall over and up and in. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to look sort of like a wall. There we go. My model is left with a little space out from the wall. I like it that way. You could put your model for your frame all the way against the wall. If you do that, however, that part of your texture will be completely black, which I don't like. So that's your choice. We're going to move our lamp up. If we look at the top view, it's much easier to figure out where you're going. There we go. OK. So let's see how that looks now in render view. Oh, now that's too bright. That's because we have reflective surfaces. So we're going to go back over here and let's try 200. Let's try 100. I did a little experimenting to decide what was the best way to light this particular model. And here's what I came up with. I changed the lamp from sun to area. OK, just by clicking. Here it's sun, there it's area. I changed the strength back to 1,000. And the size of the area lamp is 1, and it's square. Those are my changes. So that's a good starting place when you're working with this particular model. I also, if we look from the side view, have it going at an angle. And the center light goes a little bit below where the picture frame is. It's not a good idea to have it so that it goes right through your main object because you're going to get glare. So somewhere along there. So let's look and see what that looks like now. I think it looks quite nice. There. Doesn't that look realistic? In your render window, you have a choice of how clear and beautiful and sharp it's going to look. What you choose for the numbers will be dependent in some ways how hefty your computer is. I'll show you where that is. Over here, we're going to pick the render camera and then scroll down. And right here are your sample settings. So preview affects how clear and nice you see what your render would look like. You can also see it up here at the top. See where it says 25 by 25? That's pretty much the default. If you want to make it absolutely gorgeous and your computer can stand it, you can turn it up to 100 and it looks very, very pretty. We aren't going to be using that, though. It has nothing to do with baking. But it is nice if you want to take a snapshot of what you're working on to show someone or something or just impress yourself. It's very pretty.